Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. I got my tissues handy and not that I'm expecting it to be emotional, but it's a personal channeling. We are doing a channeling session today. We're going to have a conversation with Paul Wellstone. He is a former senator from Minnesota, and since it's close to election time here in the United States, I thought it would be a good time to channel him. And one of you actually, one of you inspired me to connect with, with Senator Wellstone today. I actually don't live very far from the college that he taught at. He taught at Carleton College in Minnesota and was political science teacher and such. and. He died on the campaign trail in a, in a plane crash with several other people in, uh, I think it was in like northern Minnesota somewhere. And the timing of it is what might make me emotional. So I'm going to share with you how I met him first, like the human side of this, and then we're going to talk with Senator Paul Wellstone, okay? Senator Wellstone left in October 2002. And in August of 2002, my father died. And at my dad's funeral, I met out, right outside the doors, right before things got started, I met Senator Paul Wellstone um, with one of his campaign aides. He came up to me and shook my hand and shared his condolences for the death of my father. My dad was really active in the party. And so I, I was really touched by that. And I just, I'm remembering, I want to share this with you, but I think it's, there's a personal part to channeling and spiritual connection that must be honored when we show up in our session. And I just remember standing on the steps, the, the concrete, the sidewalk right outside the, the funeral home and I remember thinking about how, how he was much shorter than I thought he was. <laughs> of course, my perspective was I had a big belly. I was very, very pregnant with my second child. And I, I don't even remember the context. It just seemed like we, he and I were, like that we were alone. There were just a, a few of us right there. And I don't recall if he came in the early in the beginning or at the end after I did the eulogy, but he was so kind. Like he just, as a human being, felt genuine. I felt, I felt that as a person. So I want to share that. Regardless of what political party you are, we're people. <laughs> so everyone's a person. And so... He was just very genuine, is how I would say, sincere. Sincere is how I felt him as a person. All right, so that is how I met Senator Paul Wellstone. And he was running for, I think, his third term at U.S. Senate here in Minnesota. He was very popular, um, very grassroots. Lots of young people came out to vote and got involved. He drove this green bus around and just super grassroots. And his signs were green and white and such a, a community uh, invitation for togetherness. And so then a few months later, he died, like two months later. And before, and since he won the election, he actually, the um, Walter Mondale was, uh, selected to, to I 
think it was Walter Mondale that served out his or served part of his term or something like that. Something like that. Walter Mondale came in. He was the former vice president. You know, he served as a vice president previously and well known in Minnesota. I actually met him a long time ago when I was in like, I think fourth grade. I met him at some kind of park political event rally thing. So I remember that. <laughs> I have met him too. And I, the timing, it's October, and I know that he died in October, Paul Wellstone, and his wife, Sheila, and their daughter, and then some other people on the campaign as well. So I want to I wanna recognize that too. Okay, so Senator Wellstone, will you come on in? Oh, Bridget, he said, oh, Bridget, and like I literally need to get up and like hug him and thank you for coming in. And his, he said, my wife, Sheila, oh, Sheila's here too, Sheila Wellstone as well. Our daughter um, isn't joining us today, but she um, is, she did transition with us. She did arrive with us, he says, arrive with us. It is lovely to meet you. You know, I went to college for political science. I studied political science. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm sure your dad was quite proud. Yes. Have you have you come across have you crossed paths with my dad in the afterlife or who else have you crossed paths with? Let's start with that just because that's like a fun way to connect and make the understanding of the afterlife for the viewers here at Above Life channel very um maybe more clear because I think there's this 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 confusion about persona and person of personification like having human traits and characteristics during a channeling session versus being pure spirit like light and and having these high evolved ideals and and expressions and things so i know that i've gotten the question a lot about when people cross over into the afterlife so who do you meet who did you see and so i gotta ask did you bump into my dad he said it was, yes, it was quite like an election night. He said, I would compare it to that of an election night. We were all very surprised to have arrived the way we did, he says. <laughs> that was rather unexpected. That was not exactly planned. Oh, can you talk about that, Senator? Can you talk about that? He, he says, it's sort of a collective amnesia. He says, I know, I know, he says, I know, I know there's all these, these great stories that people have about how they are, how, how they come into the afterlife and have these really incredible experiences. And, and I have to say that ours really wasn't, oh, I mean, it was, it was pretty normal for us as, as what we would experience, you know, as people like on election night, it's like kind of like we slid into election night. And we just all arrived. So did you arrive collectively and together? Yes, he says, yes. It's, he said, yes. That, he said, well, well he, oh, speaking from his perspective, he just was really clear. He just went like this and says, from my, my view, from my feeling, you can ask Sheila how she experienced it. But from my feeling, my feeling, he's saying, my feeling. That's interesting. You say feeling. Why do you say feeling? You know, it's sensing. It's sensory. Like he says, it's 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 that that's how you 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 know that's how you connect that's how that's how it works he says how feeling it's the feeling the feeling you have he says it's the feeling you have that that's how we're all connected he says that's how we're all connected he literally now all of a sudden i see with my third eye because i'm very clairvoyant shows me an imagery of like a field and there's trees and there's gorgeous just just wisps of of like just just beautiful foliage kind of floating like golden strands of grass kind of moving and then he shows me like a butterfly a beautiful butterfly like this this effect of how the world is and how change occurs is what he just said he says you know there's a theory about that there's a theory about that it's interesting there's a theory about that and us as we as we arrived it did wouldn't you say like he literally turns to Sheila now I'm seeing you in people form probably because I actually met you in people form before I haven't met Sheila it's nice to meet you hi it's nice to meet you it's nice to meet you too thank you I feel like was she a teacher a school teacher I feel like us I see you in a school setting there feels like there's a connection to school for her and um, I want to honor that 
she says, and you too, and you too, you too. Like she kind of points to me because I actually did some work in early childhood special education as like a second kind of career that I was exploring a few years ago, actually. Yeah, so, oh, thank you, yeah. Um, yeah, children, families, special education, special. And then she says something about like, um, she's using the term special needs kids, special needs kids. That's a little bit of a, you know, out of date. The terms always change. Terminology, lingo always changes. I know that that's like an old school way of saying, you know, children with exceptionalities or, you know, whatever. I don't even know what the current hip thing is to say. Hmm. So did you, Sheila, would you say that it was the same as, as what your husband is sharing too? I think she says, for me, it was a little bit different. I actually saw my grandmother and that surprised me. I didn't realize really that we had died until I saw her. I thought it sort of felt like a bit like a dream, like we were dreaming about the election, about the election night. And, you know, there's this big party and there's this big build up to it. And then it sort of, there's this just, ah. Uh, have we, are we really here? There's sort of almost like you don't believe it because you're working, you've been working so hard campaigning and then there's this ending and it, it kind of happens really, it happens very fast. I think anyone who's ever campaigned can, can understand that, can relate to that, she says. It just really happened fast. You know, we arrived quickly. It, it does feel like to me, in my my perspective, she says, in my view, it felt like a, it felt like an exhale, an exhale, she says, like we could just, so were you aware that the plane was crashing? Was there an awareness, you two? I know there were others that also um, crossed over with you and but, and I'm focusing on you, I can feel you too, so I'm just gonna focus on you, the two of you. But I also wanna recall, that, remember, and honor all the families of all the, the victims of that plane crash. So were you aware? I'm feeling it like bumpy, like knowing that it was down, like going down or something. Like I feel it, like I feel the, the bumps, like I'm feeling the bumps, like this isn't, this is something that isn't right, like this isn't right, this isn't right. Like it's not supposed to be this way. I'm feeling a tremendous sense of peace from the two of you. Now granted, you crossed over in 2002, that was a long, long time ago, like 18 years, is that, yeah, that's about, yeah, it's 18 years this year. In October here, it's 18 years, that's a long time. So maybe that peaceful feeling that I feel from you is, is because you have had a lot of time to be in spirit. Are either one of you reincarnated again? He says, Sheila is. No, not Sheila. Lisa, is there a Lisa? Like, I feel like one of the females is reincarnated again, Lisa. I don't know who Lisa is. It might be their daughter. She might be reincarnated again. Somebody came back right away. Somebody could not wait, she could not wait. She was like, wait a minute, I, I'm, time is done? I need to go back, I wanna go back. So she came back right away, one of the females. Okay. Sheila says, I'm still deciding. <laughs> so you knew something, Paul, did you feel that way too? There's something wasn't right, it, it just, you, you, yes, we knew, we knew that at the time, that the plane was having troubles. We knew, he says, we knew. Yes, we knew. That must have been terrifying, like as a human. I can't even imagine. He says, will you, you just have faith that, there, he says, there wasn't, really wasn't much time for anything. There wasn't really much time to like plan or think or, he says, you just, faith is all there is. He says, faith is all there is in those points. I wouldn't call it a low point, he says, because I'm like, it's in your lowest point, like we look to faith. And he says, I wouldn't call it a low point. I wouldn't call it a low point. It was one of those things that it was a timing and that happened. And there's no 
regret or remorse or anger or any kind of feelings of unsettled from us, from the two of us, he says, from, from myself. And I think Sheila feels the same. She says, no, there's no, there's no anger or um, dismay or feeling of disconnection or anything like that, you guys. And he, he's talking about grandchildren. He's talking about grandchildren. Okay. Um, somebody must be named after him. And he says something, David. David, someone, David, David. Um, must be his, his middle name, I think, right? Is that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. David, David, someone. I'm sure there's many p- people who named children after you, to be quite honest with you. There's just this, you have such a, you're so grounded, like you feel so, and as a person, when I met you that day, you felt so sincere and so authentic, and that's the kind of people we need more of that in the world. He says, there are. He says, there are, you just have to look. He says, there are, there are, you just have to look. You have to look, he says, you have to look. Where are you looking? You haven't been looking in the right place if you're not finding those people. You're not looking, you're not spending your time in the right places. Now, speaking of timing, This year, 2020 has been quite tumultuous, quite turbulent, quite intensive for many, many of us human people dealing with all sorts of stuff, politics and social justice issues and um, health issues and all of it. So I don't even know where to begin to ask you. He says, well, let's talk about politics. Let's talk about government. I'm like, oh, 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 Senator Wellstone. And he shows me the Supreme Court. Oh, you come on, you guys. Above Life Channel is not supposed to be political. It's tricky, but I'm human and I have bias. And I'm very clear that I'm human and I have bias. And there you go. And let's be honest, people won't be watching this unless they maybe have a really open heart anyway or if they're just watching to hate i mean that can happen too he says oh you get both he says you get all kinds you get all kinds but focus on where you know on the on the good stuff he says on the on the good stuff on the good stuff bring in the good bring in the good bring in the good he says focus on the good bring in the good that's the advice i would give you bridget focus on the good bring in the good he says but he says we should talk about the supreme court situation Okay, (laughs) what would you like to talk about it with? Justice Ginsburg is here. She's recently made her transition. Yes, so is she actually there there? Like, and what I mean by that, you guys, is that sometimes when people transition, I see a delay. Sometimes they're boom right there, like Paul and Sheila, like you're, you both have explained. Is it okay if I call you Paul? I don't want to be disrespectful and not say Senator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sheila just says, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Call us Paul and Sheila, okay? Um, you guys described, boom, you're right there. You're like, you go to, like, boom, this this event happens and all of a sudden you're in the afterlife. And I've seen that with other people, especially with the accidents, it seems like, with crashes and stuff. Sometimes there's moments of like this amnesia, like, like you said, Paul, or Senator Wellstone, about not knowing really where you're at, getting your bearings. And then I also see sometimes that there's a delay. Like when people are more prepared let's say it that way more prepared for their death or their crossing like they're they're ill they're dealing with a a a terminal illness or they're aging and they've been dealing with health challenges and that kind of a thing like justice ginsburg was with with cancer and such and tough lady he says tough lady tough lady says i was there you were there you were there. Were you there when she got confirmed? I don't know if you were there in the Senate yet when she got confirmed. He's like, I was there. I was there. What do you mean by I was there? Like to watch her, to see her. He says she really made us proud. She said she really made us proud. She made us proud as just she really made us proud. A lot of integrity is what I'm getting. He doesn't say the word integrity. He says she really made us proud. She really made us proud. I was there. He said, I was there. I was there for that. All right. So, so with her, I kind of felt, I did channel her and I kind of felt like she was kind of, um, sometimes I'll, I'll feel spirits kind of hang around their family for a while, kind of be around. Not that they're not, you guys, they're not like human people, like where you pack your suitcase and you're either 
at your Aunt Shirley's house visiting or you're at your house at home. It's not like you're physically here or physically there. When you're a spirit, it's, it's transcendent. It doesn't focus on geographic times. The timelines are interwoven. They're like a Subway sandwich. They're layered and it's just a up and here and I'm here and I'm here and I'm here. And it's easy for energy, which the best way for me to describe to you, you guys, is this is what I usually say to people. I say that it is like being a spirit is like a ray of the sun. You are part of a bigger whole of light. And just like with the, the sun, you don't see a specific ray, but you feel it and you sense it. And that one ray isn't just here in Minnesota where I'm at, Minnesota, yay. Go Gophers, he says, go Gophers. <laughs> University of Minnesota, go Gophers, go the Gophers. <laughs> He's like, go Gophers. I didn't go to University of Minnesota, but okay, go Gophers. <laughs> but the sun is everywhere. It's all over the place. It's shining in Florida. It's the same sun, just a different ray. And that's what a spirit is like. Different aspects of the spirit energy it can be everywhere at multiple times. And you can feel you can feel it as a relative living in Florida when your cousin died in Iowa. You can feel that. At the same time, your aunt in Alaska can also feel that visitation, that energy, okay? So that's what it is. Energy, spirit is like energy. Spirit is like rays of the sun, boom. Thank you to the person who also asked me that question on my Facebook page. Thank you. There you go. Now everybody knows. All right. So, but I felt like, um, I want to say RBG, um, like uh, Justice Ginsburg wasn't like, like I still feel like she's like kind of hovering around like with her hands on her hips, like what are you people doing? What are you people doing? Like just shaking her head like, nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> I know, we're all crazy. And she's not referring to the election or sides or current events. She's, she is referring specifically when I hear her and I've connected with her to the division like this, this fighty, fighty, fight, 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 fight. Like we're just fighting like kids for no reason. Like there's plenty of toys to go around. There's plenty of treats, snacks to go around. You're not gonna be deprived, but we all have FOMO, fear of missing out. And so, oh good God, I cannot not have what Susie has because that looks better. And then when I set mine down and I grab Susie's and then Susie comes and takes mine, then I'm like, oh no, I want that. I want all of it just for me, me, me. It's like, we're afraid of losing or missing something better. You know, like that's exactly her perspective, you guys. So do you, have you two connected? He said, she's busy. She's like making the rounds. He said, she's making the rounds. You're right, she's watching. She's watching like a hawk what's going on here. Uh, so are you two? What do you think about that? What do you think about the current events? He says, it's a landmark situation. He's like, it's a landmark case in Minnesota, he says. I know though, he says, I know I have a lot of faith in the Minnesota voters. I know that they will show up. They will show up and they will do what's right for their communities, for the children, for the families. They will do what they feel is right. He says, one of the things you have to know is that no matter what people's positions are, their, their opinions, their viewpoints on things, that has come to them over a great deal of time. That has been something that has really been, been crafted over the years. It's not something that you can just change their mind. And, and that's not at all what politics should be about. It should be about the, the understanding of, of the complexities, like the details of situations and circumstances about making things very real to people. Because when there is a personal story attached to a policy, that's when change happens. That's when it really happens because people are genuinely good people. This is Paul Wellstone, Senator Paul Wellstone talking. People are genuinely good people. And you have to have faith that they will, they, when they know they can actually have that personal relationship or connection, it, it helps them to understand why the, the law is the way it is or why the policy needs to be that way or, or, or what needs to change? He says, I, I don't, I do not, I, I have not lost 
faith in humanity. He says, in humanity. No, 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 no. So can you two, the two of you, can you see the bigger picture of things? Like, do you know what's going to happen in November on the 3rd? Can you tell us? There's going to be an election. <laughs> There's going to be an election. And it's kind of funny because Sheila just said something about the Reagans, like Nancy Reagan. So did you meet, have you met other famous political people? people in the afterlife she says you can meet whoever you want to meet she says you can meet just about anyone she says how, how so how do you mean i'm almost feeling like in human life she met her did you meet in human life no there's some kind of connection between Nancy Reagan and Sheila Wellstone, which is very strange because I know politically it's like totally opposite, different. But she says you can have very different views from people and actually like them as people. And, and, it's, and it's like Paul said, she said it's about understanding. It's about, about being willing to, to know them as a whole person, not just for one issue or or one way that they look at things. They can be very kind. Don't you find that hypocritical though when people are like focused on one issue and they believe this so strongly that they'll forget about everything else, all these other things that are also important, but they only will, will, will focus on this issue or they'll vote on this issue or they'll argue or post on social media about this one issue, even though they care about all these other things too, but they're only about this issue, like it's so focused. What Don't you find that hypocritical then? Like how can someone be so focused on this and then not, seeming, seemingly not care? She says, it's, a, it's all, it's a system that's built. She says, democracy is built on personal choice. It's complicated. It's complicated, yes, just like all of the relationships. Like when you think about a family, there are so many layers of relationship and misunderstandings and falling outs that happen. It's, it's the same. It's the same kind of a, a thing. If you look at it that way, it's the same kind of a thing. It's not, people don't try to be hypocritical or people don't try to be uh, one-sided is what you say and and oftentimes you can have really great discussions with people and really understand what what has made them so passionate and motivated about that issue that you can understand why and then often it's like Paul said it's personal stories it's personal experiences and you can't take that away from anyone or change that you can't it's ridiculous to expect to change that viewpoint hmm. that's tough because being like a one issue person is not um like, I, I wouldn't vote that way myself. I, I wouldn't. Um, I, don't, I don't think, anyway. It's you're right, it's complicated because I'm thinking, okay, if someone is, like, prejudiced, uh, racist, anti-Semitic, or anti-this, that, or the other thing, or... Um, oh, my gosh, you guys, it's snowing a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Can you guys see that? There's little flakes of snow. And the sun is trying to peek out up, up above here. If it gets super sunny, we'll have to wrap up, but... It's, it's like, do you support a candidate because of what they're for or what they're against? Like, that's an interesting dynamic. Uh, Senator Wellstone, would you care to comment on that? The for or the against? Can you talk about this, this feeling of pro or anti? kind of just in general. I think it goes back to the discussion of um, division. And although many could say that the country is very divided, I think it's always been that way. I think it's, it's always been that way. It's just that more people in the mainstream are seeing that, are, are starting to really understand how different we are as Americans. And that diversity is part of what makes for rich conversations and really good policy when you can sit across the table from someone and share personal stories and be, be willing to 
to hear them and witness them from their experience and their perspective without trying to change it. And when you can do that, then you understand, you have a common understanding and then you can work together. That's when you can work across the aisle. That's when partisanship goes by the wayside when you're dealing with people and families and children. Even if you have very different views on that, most people don't really, the thing is, he says, the thing is, is most people don't have different views. Most people, care very deeply about children and family and rights and all of this but the way that they want to go want to go about solving or protecting rather protecting these precious these precious values for them these these precious places where we hold dear the way of going about that, that's where the difference comes in. That's where the negotiations come in. That's where the standstills and the filibusters and that's where the, that's where the challenge is. So at the core, we all have some very common, common issues that we can understand and agree upon, which is the valuing of our families and the valuing of our children, regardless of whether you have children or not. Whether, whether, regardless of you, if you were raised by an alcoholic parent or not, or whether you were, you know, had this incredible stellar upbringing or not, it, it doesn't really matter. We can agree that the family is, is a really important part. It's the how that we honor that, that institution, not institution, he says, how we honor that, how we honor that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm struggling to find that, would you consider a family like a value, like a, it's, it's, it's a, it's like it's a core foundation of our community, of this understanding of community, this, this concept of community. You said that um, we were a grassroots effort, a grassroots campaign, and you're right. And that happened based on community to community to community. It's, it's like community spread, you guys. That's literally what I saw. It's like community spread. That's exactly what it's like. But it's about having those opportunities to, to share the stories, you know, to really get to know people from where they're at. And that's what, in a family, it's, that's where the start of community came from. And he says, and then there's the extension of the family. There's extended family, you know, the grandparents and the the great, great, great grandparents and all the ancestry and the cousins and all these. And there's so many different colorful personalities in, in families. And there's the black sheep of the family. And, you know, and then there's the psychedelic sheep of the family. And then there's, you know, I mean, there's all of these, these different people that form a unit. And that's a community. And so... It's just, a, it's a core foundation of who we are as people. We need those relationships. We need them. It, when you understand that and you value the relationship part, then it's, it's, it gets easier. He says it gets easier. It gets easier to understand things. <laughs> he says, what you're seeing now, he puts his hands kind of in between his legs and kind of puts his head down a little bit and says, what you're seeing now is, is fear. People are scared. They're afraid. Oh, I would agree with you because sometimes I get like that too. And I get a little crazy when I get a little stressed and fearful, you know, people are afraid. They just want something to believe in. And it's really easy to go with accepting he says, okay, so can you say that again? Cause I want to really feel that. I can hear him, which is clear audience, and I can see him, which is clear voice, and I'm trying to feel this. People can tend to fall into wanting to find the quick fix or the easy solution, and more often than not, that doesn't exist. That, that does not exist. There really is, there needs to be a commitment by, by both parties of a relationship, he's not saying political parties, you guys, he's talking about people and humanity, of both parties to work on the relationship. And when you're in the climate such as yours right now, I mean, you can understand that people are scared, they're afraid, 
I mean, when, when I mean, what is the greatest fear that many people have is the, the fear of death. And that's on the table right now. <laughs> In a lot of ways, <laughs> it's on the table right now. It's on the table. That's real. That's a very real fear. And, and many people can relate to that. And when you're in that state, then you get real afraid for any kind of change. So you hold on to everything you have, even if it doesn't really matter that much to you, you hold on to everything and you're so afraid to lose because death is that, is part of that. It's that, that grief, that sense of loss that you talk about in your work. He says that you talk about in your work, that grief, that sense of loss. It is, you're right. So we're afraid to lose. Is that what you're saying, Senator Wellstone? Okay, you guys, Americans are afraid to lose, and that's why everybody's being crazy. Everybody, on both sides, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, if you're from the North, if you're from the South, if you're... All of it, people are afraid to lose. They're afraid to lose any more than what they've already lost. They're afraid. That is a very good way to explain it. Thank you so much for that, thank you. All right, so can you talk to us a little bit about what do you think about this? Um, we're dealing with the health crisis, it's global. We're dealing with the health crisis. And I know that in your life, when I met you, um, I did notice um, the challenge that you had a little bit walking. And I understand that you had MS, multiple sclerosis, is that true? Yeah, muscular, yes, he said yes. Um, I had a really difficult time with my hip and he's showing me his hip and um, walking was 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 tough at times. He said it got it was a little tricky at times. He said a little tricky. Um, you know, he says, you know, I thought it was arthritis. Like I would get pains in my what I thought was maybe my joints, but it turns out he says it was my muscles. It was the muscle muscular system. Yeah, he's not a complainer. I can feel that, you guys. I can feel that. So can you talk to us a little bit about the health crisis that we're dealing with here in the United States and globally and all over the world right now with this, this virus and uh, trying to get vaccines and all this? Is there anything that you have to say about that? He says, you know, healthcare is a big issue for me. And he said, I would fall under the prog more of the progressives. You know, back in the old days, he said, back in the old days, you used to call us liberal. Now you call us progressive. Or... And that's a nice way to say it. He says, that's a nice way to say it. I've heard some other things. That's a nice way to say it, he says. I'm a little more progressive, he says. And he says, but Sheila and I both, I mean, healthcare is a really big issue. And Sheila says, for me, healthcare is a big issue. I think that um, families should have health care, access to health care. And I don't think that they should have to choose between a meal and a doctor visit, is what she says. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like skipping ahead in my mind, you guys, because I want to ask him more questions about stuff, but I don't want to get too political, cause, but I do want to chat with him about some other <laughs> stuff. Um, so do you think that this is about health care? Yes, they both, yes, yes. What do you think it's about? Yes, it's about health care and how do we care for one another. It's about caring for one another. <laughs> so he says, yes, they both said yes. So you guys, the health crisis and the virus is about health care. So you're trying to say that we could have avoided this? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some people, I guess, choose to learn the hard way. You know, it can be difficult, more difficult than it needs to be. But yes, yes. Is it, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel without it being a train? And I know you can't tell us about the election and I'm gonna keep asking though because you never know when something intuitive might sneak in and I might feel a vibe or something, you guys, because don't you guys wanna know? Yeah. So what about the virus thing? Are we gonna get better? Are we just all gonna be sick for the next 100 years? Hmm. Coughing. He shows me coughing. He says, oh, you know, the, you know, oh, things come and go. He says, things come and go. So is Corona, or I don't want to say that because on YouTube they, <coughs> let's not say that, um, they 
cut videos for that. Um, so is the current situation going to go away, just go away, or is it going to be part of us like chicken pox or polio or that kind of a thing? They both are like nodding, saying waves. There, there will be waves. He says, you will experience waves. And um, it, are, it has already, uh, I don't want to instill fear though or anything like that, but it has changed. You know, just like the flu vaccine every year, you guys. I just got mine and I got sick from it for like a day. It was not that big a deal, I guess, but I felt like crap for a whole day. But um, it's kind of like the flu where the flu changes. There's so many different strains of the flu and stuff. So even if I get a vaccine, I might only be covered by like four or five different strains. And I might get something else, and, you know. Is it kind of like that? Is that what you're saying? No, he says it's, it's, di it's different than that. It's more like a, a whooping cough or a... Uh, he's saying some other kind of virus, which I, don't, I can't quite hear the name of. So will there be a vaccine? Yes. He says, yes, there will be. Um, he says, I think antibody testing is going to get more popular and more of a way to help uh, monitor the spreading of this and, and might potentially help with other, other illness. He says, might actually help with other illnesses. But he says, antibody testing, the preventative um, the understanding of who's carrying it and who isn't, he says, is really going to play a major role. The reaction or response and the vaccination piece, the medication to to help help treat it is also equally important as the antibody testing. But he says um, the vaccines are really an, almost an afterthought at this point. It, it's almost too late. We're too behind in order to stop the next um, series of of um, outbreaks is what he says. That's not to say that it's going to get worse than it has been already, but it's to say that you already know how to handle it. He says you already know what you can do and how to handle it and how to manage it. And unfortunately, it is like one of those things where some people will just get it and it will be bad for some people and it'll be dire and it will change their lives and it may take their life, he says, but not for everyone. And that's the difficulty. It's not predictable. And that's, that's the difficulty in creating a vaccine that will be effective because you may get into a situation, he says, like the flu vaccine, where it's changed and ad adapted every year because the virus itself has changed. And it's probably more like, likely to have it be like that than like a polio or a measles or that kind of a thing. Okay, so we know what to do and we're doing it. And we know how to be healthy and stay healthy as much as best we can. But there also is a bit of unknown. We don't need to like go be all crazy and like whatever, throw caution to the wind. But we also don't need to be so scared that we are worrying constantly as long as we're taking our precautions, right? We don't have to just be in my house. I don't have to be like, oh my gosh, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. No, I don't have to be doing that. Well, that doesn't help anyone. So, okay. So come on, can you give us any hints on the election? <laughs> I don't know if I should say that one out loud because um, he says, Bridget, between you and I, I sure would like to see a female vice president. <laughs> like, I know, I know, me too. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, girl power, you guys, girl power. Yeah. All right. So. Is there anything additional that you would like to share with us or give us some insight or encouragement? He, anything about the afterlife that you find different or interesting that you'd like to share? I don't know if I want to say that out loud. That seems a little, well, I'm, I'm, I will. Um, it's easier than we thought it would be. The um, There's not a, he says, we don't miss you like you miss us. It's, it's, it's not really, we don't have a feeling of separation. It's, it's like you said, like the sun. We're, we're all part of the same light. So he says, we don't feel that. We don't have those, those, those sort of feelings. Um, he says, I would like to say that we can connect by feeling. That's the, that's the best, easiest way to connect with uh, us is through 
through the feeling, through the heart, through the heart. That's, that's the easiest way for us to communicate. Who's the coolest person you met over in the afterlife and how did you meet them? He says, yeah, well, we bumped into the Reagans. <laughs> he just said that. I'm like, what? Like, there's this big party? He says, well, we bumped into the Reagans. I'm like, okay. So you met them. Yes, he says, it's, it's a different, um, it, it's not what you think, though. He says, it's not what you think. It's not like a, because I'm imagining in my head, and I'm sure you guys would see this, I'm seeing like this cocktail party kind of reception, like on election day. He says, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. He said, that's exactly how it was like when we arrived. He says, but the, the strangest thing was, there was everyone, all of the parties, all of the people. He says, like Winston Churchill and all of these people. And it was like this, and Sheila says, like this crazy dream. But it was real reality for us. It's kind of like being accepted into this big club and yet never having gone anywhere else. Because he says, we're not anywhere else. We're still with you. We're still here. You still feel us. So are, is there anybody that you're working with campaigning wise? Are you campaigning in the afterlife? Does it work like that? Sort of. He says, it sort of does. It sort of does. He said, it sort of does. Just He says, Bridget, just like you do. Don't you campaign for people? Don't you encourage them, support them to trust themselves and to believe in themselves? to know that they can connect with their own intuition and that they should be doing that. It's just a natural part of them. Don't you do that too, Bridget? Don't you do that too? <laughs> I try, I try you guys. Vote for Bridget. <laughs> Vote for my channel. <laughs> Aren't there YouTube awards or something? <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see my dad. Hey, he said it's my favorite time of year. I know. Election night. I remember. I remember standing in the VFW and watching some of the election results. I remember as a kid doing that. He says, don't let, don't let. Don't let all the drama that's going on, he says, detract from what's really happening. He says, this is a democracy. It's my dad. It's a democracy. It's a democracy. I drove for four hours yesterday to make sure my daughter got her absentee ballot. It was mailed to home because that's what happens when you're away at college and you're staying there temporarily in the dorms. So I made sure. He said, it's the democracy that's going on and we should be proud of that. We as people, you guys, we should be proud of that. The fact that we have the right to vote is a big deal. It's a big deal. Yes, that's what's going on. People are participating. People are having voices. You're hearing lots of different voices. There's a lot of nonsense, you guys, a lot of nonsense stuff that's trying to distract us. It's such a great lesson, you guys, for energy. And people from other countries watching this sideshow circus that we have on, you guys, don't worry. Most of us are grounded and centered and understand that there's a lot of craziness. It's like a, a soap opera, reality TV show. You don't know who's coming, who's going, what's happening, what conspiracy theory is like being touted like a real thing or what the heck, you know? That most of us, still have our wits about us and are very grounded and centered. That's just sensationalized. The craziness is just being sensationalized and amped up, just like energetically for people who are empathic, who feel like you said that you guys connect with people by feeling with them. Most spirits do. I'm doing it this way, you guys, because I have my microphone. I don't want to tap on it. And... So most people connect this way by feeling, by feeling, and so, energetically as a, an empathic person you are going to feel all this stuff and it's almost like this way of being manipulated and distracted by this all this blah 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 blah, blah nonsensey stuff like watching the soap operas or binging on such and such when you have other things you can do that are more productive healthy for you like a lot of other things that are 
more deserving of your attention. And so energetically, that's, that's a thing. Energy is being misused through the feeling energy, the feeling channel. So make sure you claim your energy as a heart-scented being and ground your heart space. And don't lose your mind and get on the crazy thoughts, patterns of fear and all that. Just really ground yourself and know who you are and know what matters to you and what things are important to you. What issues are your most important things? What policies are your most important things? What people are the most important in your life? And focus on the people right here in front of you, not the people in Washington, not the people that are far away from you. Do your job and vote. Do your job and participate in the process. But you don't need to stir the pot or fan the flames or, you know, pour gasoline on the fire. If you want an example of how that works, just read some crazy comments on YouTube. There are people that have like 15, 20, 30 just fake accounts so that they can write crazy comments and stir up trouble on drama on different channels. And some people fall into that. Don't fall for that. Just ignore that. Just yeep. I don't have time for that. Make time for you. Make time for what matters to you. Make time for the people in your life that matter. Make time for the things in your life that matter. Make time for your heart. Take tender care of your heart during this time. And do your job and vote. Because you need to do that. If you're not registered, register and vote. Just do it. Do it, please. It's important. All right. Thank you, Paul and Sheila Wellstone. Thanks, Dad, for popping in. Appreciate you all for being here and a little bit of the snow that's falling. You, can you guys see the snow? I don't know if you guys can actually see it. Let's see if you guys can actually see it. Can you see it? Yes, it's October and you might get a little bit of snow in Minnesota. It's beautiful though. Mm -hmm. So this is Bridget. You've been watching a channeling session at Above Life Channel with Paul and Sheila Wellstone from The Afterlife. If you don't know who the Wellstones are, you might want to Google it or look it up. A senator from Minnesota that died in 2002 in a plane crash with his wife, his daughter, and several others on, his cam on the campaign trail right before the election for his, what would have been, because he won, his third term in office. So, very important to your very homegrown as a Minnesotan and born and raised and living still here in Minnesota, obviously. Mm -hmm. Snow in October. Yeah, it happens. So make sure you subscribe to Above Life channel so you never miss a new video if you're interested in my uh, work and knowing me more in the psychic coaching realm. Go ahead and check out my other channel, Fairy Grasshopper. Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. You can find me on social media, Bridget Inspired on Facebook and Bridget Inspired on Instagram. Remember the purpose here at Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this right here, right now is your life. It's yours. Don't get distracted by all the other nonsense. It's your life. So my question for you today is, how are you living it? How are you living your life? Are you letting other people's Opinions, views, distract you, take you off course, make you feel different than you normally feel. Hmm? How are you living your life? It's your life. How are you going to live it today? Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.